Well, hello from the Scott Learning Center. I'm Jay Mahaffey. I manage a learning center here in Scott for Bayer. We're getting a lot of questions, had a lot of conversation this winter about wider row configurations in cotton. And in 2019, we did some work <clears throat> in a preliminary evaluation of 76-inch row cotton here on the site. I thought I'd take a few minutes today and review our data and talk about some of the positives and negatives we saw with this row configuration. So why are we messing with this? Number one, growers ask. And there, there are, is a lot of our program that's generated from grower uh, suggestions. And we had a lot of questions about, can I take 30 inch planters, which are used to plant grains, soybeans and corn primarily, space those out or leave seed out of every other row and plant a, basically a 60 inch spacing. The answer to that is yes, but there's some limitations and things that we need to explore to do that most, most properly. Now our work here on the Learning Center is done on a 76 inch bed because our equipment's based around 38 inch spacings. The rationale behind that is if it works in 76 inches, it probably translates fairly well into the 60 inch planters. The idea is being able to standardize equipment and, and basically have one set of planting equipment, one set of tractors and all those sorts of things. There's some regional justifications that go into this conversation also. When you look at the arid west, whether it's far out west Texas or places like Australia that are really dry, there's a big water conservation component to the wider row spacing. So they're a lot wider than even 76 inch rows in some cases. That's not so much our concern in the deep south because we get so much rainfall and we have the opposite problem of excessive growth. So when you look at the mid-south and the southeast, there are a few things in this story that are, that are interrelated. One of them is that 30 inch solid cotton production here in the Mid-South is particularly difficult. It's difficult for a lot of reasons. One being the equipment uh, typically spaced on 30 inch spacings when we try to grow solid cotton is it, somewhat difficult. There's a lot more moving parts. It, it doesn't turn as well and there are a lot of issues with that. But our, our real problem in growing solid 30 inch cotton is primarily revolving around disease and the bowl rot potential that exists in 30 inch solid plantings. The wide row and skip row patterns can help manage some of that and we, we've done some evaluations of that. There are lots of agronomic advantages of the, the wider row spacings, whether they're two in one skip row or one in one or the, the 60, 76 inch row spacing. There are a lot of reasons that makes sense. Light interception being one, there are a couple of things that you can't overdo for the most part in cotton fields. One of them is the interception of light and the other is potassium fertilizer. We'll talk about that in some other videos. When you look at the effect that the wider row spacings have, the plant to plant competition is typically greatly reduced, which leads us to having less difficulty in maintaining sound growth control programs in those cotton fields. So we, we had a program last year to evaluate that, and I'm going to show you a summary of the results across a couple of the, the points that, that I think are relevant in the conversation. We planted two Delta Pine cotton varieties, 1646 and 1845. We planted those at 30, 40, and 50,000 on the land acre, and we'll talk about population in a moment. There are a few things about that to be aware of when you, when you endeavor to do these sorts of things. We planted those in solid row spacings of 38 inch rows in two and one skip row 38 inch, so one row out of three not planted. And then we planted it in one and one skip row or in a 76 inch row spacing. Those plots were maintained agronomically the way they needed to be maintained for the growth conditions of the year. A couple of things to, to be aware of. In our previous skip row work here on the Learning Center, we have seen that those skip row plantings are easier to, to control growth in, primarily because the, the, the ability to intercept light leads them to intercept or to set more fruit and fruiting forms, and they control themselves on some level. They still require some PGRs, but last year was not a year for us to evaluate very growthy conditions in Scott, and we'll talk about that at the very end. These were large, relatively large plots. They were 12 row strips, 250 or so feet long. And when you look at the results, the, this is uh, 1646 pulled out by itself. Now the, the bottom uh, level of yield on this graph is 1,000 pounds. So the differences aren't quite as big as they look like on the graph, but you see that in the solid plantings last year, 
1646, we made some extremely high yields. 2019 was a very high yielding year for, her, for us here at Scott, and we had lots of plots scattered around the site that, that yielded at that, those levels. The two-in-one skip row, you can see that it, it was marginally less than the solid, and in the 38-inch or the, the one-in-one 38-inch skips or the 76-inch rows, you see they were very competitive. All of those plots were, were higher yielding than 1,700 pounds of lint or so an acre. When you look across the two varieties of 1845 and 1646, you see a similar result. We did see, when you, when you look in the different row spacings, there was some response to population in the solid and the two-in-one skip row that did not seem to be as evident in the wider row spacing of 76-inch rows. We're going to follow that up this year and try to, uh, to illuminate that a little bit and see if that's, that's real or that was an artifact of the year. But that was what we observed last year. 30, 40, and 50,000 on the land acre work radically different in yield potential in that wider row spacing. Now, a lot of people ask me as I'm talking to them, what keeps you up at night? And, and this is it. This is actually the yield potential, I think, that we can observe of the modern cotton varieties that we're growing here at Scott today. The previous yields I showed in those previous two graphs were actually the yield on the land acre. So that's accounting for the skip. This graph shows you the yield potential of the across the two varieties down the row. And you see that in the 38 inch solid plantings, we made 16, 1700 pounds, 1800 in a couple of cases where we uh, were planting in a solid 38 inch pattern. The 38 inch two and one skip, you see that down the row, the yield level was higher. So this is not accounting for the skip. You look in the one in one skip row and you see down the row yield potentials of 33, 3,400 pounds. Last year was a very high yielding year here in Scott and I think this is a fair demonstration of the actual yield potential that we have in cotton varieties as they stand today. Now, how do we access that yield potential is another question. And I think these row configurations and light interception and fertility and population, all those things can play a part. But we need to realize that we have more yield potential there than we're actually using year in and year out. And it's always a compromise. We have to compromise between the, between the factors that we have the ability to manipulate in the field to harvest an acceptable amount. We may not reach the maximum, but we can try to bite off pieces of this over time. Now, when you look at, at 2019 and what we're gonna do in 2020, Last year, the positives that we observed in the wider row spacings were very high fruit retention, certainly higher than 80%. It was very high in the solid row spacings also. We did observe in almost all the skip row or wide row work that we've ever done here on the Learning Center, reduced growth potential in the, in the skip row patterns. I think that is a result of, of the accumulation of fruit and the, less plant, the reduced plant to plant competition across the field. One of the couple of things, or a couple of things I would point out though, we did see less disease and bowl rot in previous years work with these wider uh, skip row type patterns. We did not have really any disease or bowl rot in 2019, which enabled the yield levels we were actually able to make. And my contention is if we had had any, the, the yield levels would probably have been even more competitive in the wider row configuration. We did see that the population relationship is similar in the, in the wider configurations to the solid. It it's seems to be a similar relationship with maybe, maybe a little less response. Uh, the bottom line of all of that is the yield potential was very competitive in the wider row configurations. The potential negatives would be equipment setup and adjustment. And one caution I would issue if you endeavor to go out and do this sort of thing, uh, know what your planner is doing because some planters will compensate for rows that you turn off and try to put those seeds back into the rows that are actually planting seed. Some don't. Some folks don't have all those computer things on planters and they go out and set transmissions. My advice would be understand how your planter behaves, calculate the spacing seed to seed that you need and make sure the planter is planting what you think it's planting. Because we've had a lot of cases this year where we've overplanted fields. I've had a couple where we've underplanted some and had to, had to figure out what to do. There is a little bit of unknown about population. And of course, you've got a big skip out there that's not going to get a lot of help from shade for weed control. And picking, you, ha you have to maintain a focus on picking. Uh, if you're in a cotton business, you've got to have a cotton picker of some kind. 
and uh, there's some setup and layout of picking machinery that has to happen to make these wider configurations work. So what are we doing in 2020? Uh, we have actually about a 45 acre plot planted where we planted in 38 inch row configuration, 76 inch rows, two and one skip row on 38s and solid 38s. We've got two varieties planted out there. These are about Eight, one acre plots and they're planted from 8,000 to 44,000 on the land acre but the part to realize about that is to get those levels you have to plant 16,000 to 88,000 down the road so those are pretty dense and we plan to evaluate bowl rot disease potential and all the things that potentially could influence the crop and in our ability to manage it so with that, if you'd like to talk about any of the details, drop me a note at the email on the screen or give me a call. That's my cell phone on the screen. Your local Bayer reps are always out to help if, if possible. We look forward to seeing you at the Learning Center this summer. Thanks for listening.